what's up with your microbiota? You're like, what, what are you talking about? Maybe you've heard of it uh, called your gut microbiome. Uh, a little a book review about six years <laughs> too late, perhaps. Um, but I want to talk about the um, this book called The Good Gut. There are, I don't know how many of these books now on the microbiota. Um, this is the first one that I've really read, well, in this case I listened to, um, all the way through. Um, and it, it reaffirmed a lot of things that have already, and again, it's an old book, and I know there's a lot more research of late that's gone on in the last six years. This is a field that's emerged with probiotics, and there's money in it, so of course there's a lot of information. But I thought I'd just talk about this book because I feel like it's one of those books that was um, one of those central books early on in this um, microbiota, gut microbiome uh, information that has just taken off. And I, and I think highlight some of what I think are some important features. Now, a little disclaimer here. I This is not an error. Maybe for some of you, you're like, ah, this is not what you usually talk about. You know, what? why are we talking about this? Or why are you talking about this? Well, it, it is an important area of health and fitness right now. Uh, I see uh, uh, there's there seems to be a lot of um, people that are prescribing probiotics as a way to heal the gut. And that concerned me. Um, and I wanted to make sure... You know, I've been in some research on it over the years and, and just kind of stayed up on it. I'm not an expert, though, in this area. There are others that are far more qualified than I am. So I'm going to provide a review on this book, okay, and and, and just talk a little about what I think it reaffirms that I've seen. Um, I will give way, certainly, to those that are doing research in this area. And that's why I, I highlighted this book because you have some of the preeminent, at least some of the, the, the central researchers in this field. Again, it's an old book, but I still think it's a good one worth talking about. So, The Good Gut um, by Sonnenberg, um, and I just I got to make sure I did that right. Um, yeah, Sonnenberg, Justin Sonnenberg, I'll put the, I'll put the screen up here, and Erica Sonnenberg. Um, worth your time. It really is. I haven't, I haven't really listened. I have the other one, 10% Human, I haven't looked into. Um, I'll probably review that one as well once I get it done. But I wanted to talk about this again just because it's such a, a, a big deal and I'm concerned about people using it as, um, and a lot of times in the supplement world, right, you, you, we clasp on to things and we just run with it. Uh, and we start to prescribe things and that's a concern. So the, the highlights of this book, okay, it's a very well done book. It's not overwhelming in terms of the scientific literature. It's a very um, practical application. It does a nice job of explaining the importance of the microbiota, explaining the you know, it talks about probiotics. If you have questions about those, um, it explains, it does a good job, even though it's an older book. I don't think this information that's disseminated in the book is, is much different than it is today. We're just getting more of a picture of the microbiota and how it relates to health and wellness. But th this is the takeaways I had from the book. First of all, again, worth your time. It's only like 13 bucks. Um, which for a book right now is cheap. It's an older, because it's an older book. Um, but the takeaways are quite boring. <laughs> Not because the book is boring, but because the outcomes are boring. And it, it's this, eat fiber, right? Go easy on red meat. I didn't say don't eat red meat, just go easy on it. What is go easy? One time a day is, is seems to be the, the kind of hinge point for cardiac risk, cardio, colorectal cancer, which is even more concerned, risk. Um, so less red meat, the better. Certainly lean. Right. If you're going to eat it, you know, I'm not saying don't ever enjoy a steak. I do uh, or a nice hamburger. Sure. It, it What the book kind of highlights is the importance of consistency. And so if you are consistently not eating vegetables um, and or not eating fruit, one of the others, um, that's not going to be good no matter what else you do, no matter how much you supplement, no matter what, it, it's not it's not the same. Um, we eat way too less little fiber per day, which, again, these are things I already understood before I read the book. but um, you know, this is going to sound crazy, but eating 150 grams of fiber, I don't hit that. Um, I pay the price for it too. But understanding that could be a healthier bandwidth. I'm looking at healthier diets like the Mediterranean diet. Um, like plant-based diets, um, they are healthier for the microbiota. And the problem with plant-based diets many times, working with plant-based um, people, uh, is that it's, adherence is very difficult. The good news is, and this is what I keep highlighting, and, and if you watch any of my other videos, I always come back to this. What's the one thing you could do to improve your health, to lose weight, to maintain your weight, to improve your athletic performance, right? Um, what's the one thing? If I was to pick one thing, you forced me to pick one thing, it wouldn't even be protein, which I think is extraordinarily valuable. Um, it would be eat your fruits and vegetables. Get those fruits and vegetables in. At least four servings a day. Um, you can get up to even 12, right? I mean, 
as I would say as much. And if you don't like one, eat the other one, eat the heck out of it. You're like, well, I don't worry about the, sh- I don't want the, sh- the, the fruit in or the sugar and fruit. Um, I, as long as you eat the skin on the fruit and, and eat fiber, uh, it's self-regulating. So don't worry about it. Um, it'd be better to binge on fruit than it would be to binge on candy or something else. Right. And so, um, that's the main, one of the main takeaways I got from this book is something that we already know, but it just keeps driving home the point that the microbiota is, is, is perhaps, and I think it is, um, a median a mediator between at least one of them, not the only one, um, mediator between health and, um, what we put in our, in our mouths, what we, you know, what we eat, um, exercise likely has a positive impact. There's no reason to believe it wouldn't. Um, the book highlights that at the time really wasn't a lot of, of, of connection, but certainly it's going to be important. Okay. The no doubt though, that getting fruits and vegetables are important, limiting red meat and, and fatty meats. Again, this is nothing new. This is, you know, understanding that what you eat matters and consistently what you eat matters. If you have a nice, you know, I had a client years ago. I remember, um, I was consulting with him and he just kept saying, can I eat this cheeseburger? There, there was a place in town that had these delicious cheeseburgers. It was a, ba- a, bl- a blue bacon. No. A uh, blue cheese bacon cheeseburger. So, yeah, you can imagine. I mean, that's a few calories. Um, he's like, man, can I just have one of those, though? Like once a week. And it was like, yeah. Yeah, you could. Now, now will that shorten his lifespan? I, probably. I don't know how much. Maybe not. But what was he doing the other, you know, really 6.9 time, you know, t- moments of his day? Was he sleeping? Was he eating fruits and vegetables? I mean, man, that can... Fruits and vegetables, I used to say exercise was the great eraser of bad health habits, and that's somewhat true. I, I would disagree with my younger self, and I'd say fruits and vegetables are the, are the best eraser that we have of bad dietary and, and activity choices. They really are. I'm not saying that you, know, you can eat fruits and vegetables and do whatever the heck you want, but I am saying that by not having enough fruits and vegetables, you are setting yourself for health problems. Um, I think that's pretty much slam dunk. It doesn't mean you have to be an extreme and be a vegan. Um, there's only a few people I think that can do that. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just hard to do. Um, it can become a fad diet for some people and for other people, it can become their diet now, just like in these other diets, right? Um, you know, you have to find something that works for you, but for most of us, it's going to be an omnivore diet and finding the balance, um, and of some of the foods that we may enjoy that are not as healthy for us, but making sure we're getting healthy foods in and eating the healthiest food. You heard saying this a lot, eat the healthiest food that's possible. A lot of people get stuck right in this idea. I can't eat healthy foods too expensive. That's, that's incorrect. Um, again, I have a, <clears throat> one of the, I love food Inc. That movie, I know I'm getting off track a little bit, but food Inc. But one of the scenes that really bothers me in that movie is the family goes in and says, we can't eat healthy and they weigh the vegetables and, oh, and I, I, there's some good things in that documentary. Don't get me wrong, but it really bothered me that they was like, well, we just can't eat healthy. We'll just eat cheeseburgers. Uh, you know, our lifestyle is too fast. Well, it's possible to slow your lifestyle down. I don't know what their lifestyle is. It's easy for me to, I know it's like, well, it's easy for you to say that. Well, let's look. I bet you, I bet you they're not as busy as they, they say they are. And certainly there's frozen vegetables. I don't eat fresh vegetables all the time. Um, <laughs> I can't afford it either. You know, some of you can, I think that's great. Um, it's not to shame you and then eat them. But for, for a lot of us, that's not possible. You can still eat healthy food. Okay. I I think we just, me included, we use excuses a lot of times not to do that. So anyway, off the soapbox, back to the book. Um, so fiber, limit bad food choices, limit red meat to some degree, at least one. And I say, you know, some degree one on average once per day is, is kind of the boundary I always put out there just based on the available literature. Um, probably less is better, maybe meat in general. But, um, I think again, it's that whole optimal practical thing. And, if you try to vegan out um, and you're not, you can't do it, then you just end up in a really bad spot anyway. So you have to kind of look at the unintended consequences of, of, of trying to max out health and may not be affordable to do that um, in that case. So if you, I'm talking about going full plant-based, some of you, some people have done that. I work with people that do it all the time or uh, the people that do it and they do it well and others uh, can't make it. And that's okay. We find somewhere in between maybe on the vegetarian you know, configuration that works best. So anyway, that's what I took away from the book. Um, in that respect, probiotics, what about them? Are they good? Are they a good idea? Um, it's again, the support of what I had already kind of researched and, and, and thought was a- accurate at the time. And that's probiotics are helpful. The, the book will go on to explain this, you know, probiotics kind of, um, occupy space more than likely lactobacillus is one of the biggest ones occupy space. So, um, you know, when, when there is some sort of disease issue, they take up space. So bad microbes, bad quote unquote, bad microbes can't grow. And so maybe allows the, the, the microbiota to recover, but probiotics are in and out. 
And so you have to keep taking them in order to see that benefit. And probiotics themselves may not be the benefit. Um, uh, most of these probiotics come from fermented food, and which the book talks a lot about, which I think is great. Provides some practical menus, which you find valuable. I won't tell you all those menus because that's the, you know that's their work that they put in. But fermented food, um, you know, yogurt right, has been the classic one to talk about. Um, a great source, you know, uh, good talk about antibiotics. Using too many antibiotics in our culture, and I think a lot of doctors are starting to back off of them. Um, and only using them when absolutely necessary because it tends to wipe out the micro. Well, it does. Mic- wipes out the microbiota, and the microbiota has our time recovering. Um, uh, this is where probiotics could be very helpful. Uh, and it talks about infants and um, vaginal born versus C section born, and how important it is those that are uh, C section born are exposed perhaps to, not perhaps, are exposed to a microbiota of some sort. There's a difference. We have literature that supports that. Now, vaginally born um, children are better off in, in many, and in, 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 I want to use that word many carefully, are better off in some health outcomes than those that are born in a C-section. So trying to work around that. It doesn't mean if you're born, you know, if the baby's born in a C-section, all is lost. It just means that there could be some other things that maybe need to be brought into the equation this book talks about in consultation with your doctor. Um, about how to, you know, protect the baby. Okay. So just some good stuff about, I think very practical, not overly extreme on anything. Um, the probiotics can using with caution. Um, the, the problem I have with the, this whole, and I've kind of shied away from the talk about until now, this whole microbiota, um, you know, gut microbiome is people are using probiotics as like these pinpoint bombing runs. And I've seen some research that have done this well, but th- th- there's not a lot of it. Like you have to remember if, if you're talking about like a population Right. And so if you wipe this the same thing, kind of antibiotics does, you wipes out everything and wipes out the bad microbes, but it also wipes out the good ones, quote unquote, good ones. Well, if you go in there and think, well, I'm going to pinpoint bomb these particular microbes, how does that affect the balance in the microbiota? On top of that, everybody's might, you'll just talk about in the book. Um, everybody's microbiota is different to some degree, depends on the food you eat, depending on where you raise, depending on the culture, depending if you have a dog, depending on if you're in the dirt a lot, depending if you're synthetic talks, the book talks, um, I think not to the point of paranoia though, about not cleaning too much. And not killing everything, and I'm, the time I'm recording this is, is the time of COVID-19, kind of tailing off, I guess. But, um, you know, maybe I thought about this too. You know, how much cleaning we've done to avoid COVID-19, what are we doing setting up ourselves and our, you know, potential kids for trouble later on down the road? Um, understanding that avoiding COVID-19 is important. Uh, the same with flu, right? There's a balance there, and the book does a good job of talking about that. I would highly encourage you to take check out this book. Um you know, if you want, if you're just like, I don't know, all this information about the gut microbiota, I, how do I sift through it? Just give me a book that explains it to me. It's not overwhelming. It's not a textbook. <clears throat> and it gives me some practical advice, but doesn't go into the extremes of you got to, you know, revamp your diet. Now, there certainly the authors are more of a plant-based approach, um, you know, pretty anti-red meat to, to some degree. But I still think a balance exists in the book, which I really enjoyed. And the two individuals that wrote it are scientists. They're not bloggers. Okay, so um, you're going to get people who are involved with the research um, intimately because they're doing a lot of it. Um, so um, things to keep in mind as you read it, and I'll, I'll wrap this up. Of course, it's biased and that the microbiota is the be all end all of everything. If you read a book on neurology, you'll get the same approach. If you read a book from if I wrote a book on exercise, you'll get the same approach that this is it. This is the one connect. So it, I would say the microbiota is indeed a mediator, a very important mediator. Uh, you know, it's in the book points out, it's called the second brain, right? Your gut, second brain, you know, this gut feeling, you know, talks about these, these interactions we have with the gut. Um, you know, if, if, for me, if I eat fast food now, um, I get horrible GI distress. Why? Because I haven't eaten that stuff since I was in college, not the way I used to, right? Until I had nutrition classes, right? Um, and so my gut microbiota has changed. And many of you experience uh, that I work with that start to eat a lot of vegetables, they get bloated and they, you have a lot of gas and you feel awful, but if you give it some time, what you're, what a lot of what's going on is your gut microbiota is changing. You're changing the population of your gut. You're changing the structure of your gut. In fact, it points out the classic studies that really blew the micro, gut microbiota into the, the limelight, which is when they took these rats that have that are obese and transferred their gut microbiota, their gut microbiome, I guess the population of their gut, and put it into lean mice. And those mice that were lean became fat, and they did the other thing the other way, uh, and the lean mice became fat, and the fat mice became lean, right, became obese. And so just highlighting, you know, the effect of the gut microbiota. Now, you know, it talks about fecal transplants, right, um, and they have limited success in certain areas. Um, but I think what's important when you think about those linkages is that those obese mice, yes, they'll be lean, but they can go back to being obese. In fact, the older they got, the more likely they would be resistant to that type of transfer, okay? 
Um, being around the other lean mice also was a benefit. They got leaner by being around other lean mice because we have this microbe transfer. That's very fascinating stuff. But at the heart of it, though, is still this. You have to change your behavior, right? Um, yeah, this is the, again, the microbiota is a linkage. It's a, it's a great idea. You know, I equate it to like bariatric surgery. It can, it can, it can affect change long term. But if you don't change your behavior, if you don't overcome some of these problems that you have in your diet and your activity, it's not going to make a lick of difference. Cause if you have a, you know, if you take probiotics, it's against the whole thing with the supplement industry. Well, I take these 50 supplements, but I still eat cheeseburgers, um, and stay up all night and, um, you know, don't work out. And all, but these, these supplements will save me. No. Again, remember, it's called a supplement for a reason. The same with the microbiota. It's, it's helped us to under, you know, it can help us understand the connection um, between good health and bad health and health, negative and positive health outcomes. But in itself is always going to be a supplement to some degree. Um, even if we find those specific, you know, um, those specific bacteria that for specifically for you, and this is where everything's headed, that you should take to heal your gut, which could be good. That could be a great thing. If somebody has IBS or something like that, cool. But if you go back to your old eating habits and your old eating patterns, then you're going to change your gut microbiome again. Your microbiota is going to change back to its old state. And so now you're going to have a point where you're back to where you started. And if you think about it, that's fad dieting, that's, that's the problem over and over again. So while I think this is interesting and important information, you should read this book to have a background on it. it and I'm sorry I'm kind of tailing around here, but these thoughts come in my head as, I, as I'm talking about this. I want to just make this point is that um, – don't rely on this again as some sort of uh, cure-all. It's still going to come down to good dietary choices and physical activity and exercise. Okay. Um, good book though. If you're curious about all this stuff about the gut microbiome, gut microbiota, um, then it's, this book is well worth your time to read or to listen to. And then you can look at some of the other ones maybe with more of a balanced lens because some of these books are other books. The ones that I've seen are perused, to be fair. Um, some of them can be a little more extreme in their approach. So, um, hope you found this valuable. If you have subscribe, like this video or don't, don't subscribe to the video. You can subscribe to my channel, like this video. I'm gonna have a Patreon page coming up soon too. take a look at that for some special videos. Also Q and a opportunities. Um, you can suggest topics for my videos and I'll make them. Um, and that's all part of the Patreon levels as well, but I will continue to release free, um, accessible videos on YouTube, um, as well. Again, I hope you found this value valuable and I will see you in the next video.